Welcome to the life you crave. Simple and sustainable weight loss for women who have better things to do than diet. I'm your host, Leah Pinelli. I help ambitious, badass women stop overeating, overworking, and overgiving to lose weight from a place of love. I'll help you simplify weight loss, end your overwhelm, and create the life you crave. If you like what you hear, please like and subscribe to this podcast. Let's get started. Are you constantly saying things like, I know what I need to do. I'm just not doing it. Do you envy people who exercise regularly and actually enjoy it? Do you feel like you don't have time to eat healthy or exercise or get enough sleep? Are you overworked and overwhelmed with zero capacity to add healthy habits to your daily routine? If this sounds like you, then this 90-minute free masterclass is going to change the game. On September 28th, 5 p.m. Pacific, I am teaching the Fly Girl Method at my free online masterclass. The Fly Girl Method is an unconventional approach to eat well, exercise regularly, and de-stress daily, even when you're busy AF. Head over to leahpanelli.com forward slash fly girl and sign up today. Hello and welcome to the Life You Crave podcast. I am here today with Diane Tavner, who is the co-founder of My Point B. Diane continues to pioneer a new vision for education in America. During her 20 years as the co-founder and CEO of Summit Public Schools, a nationally recognized nonprofit, Diane developed a school model centered on real-world experiences, self-direction, collaboration, and reflection, preparing all students to succeed in college, thrive in today's workplace, and lead a secure and fulfilled life. She is the author of the best-selling book, Prepared, What Kids Need for a Fulfilled Life, and co-hosts the Class Disrupted podcast with Michael Horn. Diane serves as the board chair for the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning, Pahara Institute, and Minerva University, and is a board member of Transcend Education. Diane, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show today. I'm really happy to be here with you, Leah. It's it's, uh, good to be in conversation as always. Yes. So I have to tell my listeners that the reason I'm so excited that Diane has agreed to come on the show is because Diane went through my 90-day program. And um, for those of you who have been listening to me for any length of time, you know that I really don't care about weight loss. (laughs) What I actually care about is freeing up the mental real estate that women are currently using, you know, counting calories and carbs. And and maybe you're not even doing that anymore, but it's really that mental real estate, or as I'm going to share, Diane used the term leakage, that leakage that so many of us are, are, are suffering from when it comes to thinking about our relationship with food and weight in our bodies, instead of using that same energy to uh, really fulfill our full potential and live the fullest expression of our lives when it comes to our vocation, our contribution. And so when Diane agreed to come on the show, I was so excited because I'm like, she's the perfect example of a very high achieving, very driven woman, obviously, you learn from her bio, who was also suffering from the same stuff that I was suffering from, right? Which is kind of constantly thinking in the background about the food and weight stuff. So I am so honored that you have agreed to come on today and to share your story because I think it's probably, uh, A, it's totally relatable, but B, no one would have suspected you, right? Like you're so focused and driven in your work. So will you just share with us a little bit, Diane, about what were you experiencing um, and how was it impacting your ability to, you know, make your highest contribution? Yeah, I'm happy to, Leah. And um you know, you referred to this term leakage. And I'll be honest, certainly, I didn't make up the term. Um, You know, I I borrowed it from conversations with my husband around like emotional leakage. And when we started working together, um, and, and you were, you know, helping me work through and describe what was going on, what popped in my head is like, oh, the the time, the mental space that I'm spending every single day, 
on thinking about and, you know, sort of obsessing about like what I'm eating or what I'm not eating or what I'm wearing or not wearing or what I should be wearing or what I should look like or how I feel about how I'm looking um, really is leakage because it's, it's leaking all of this energy and time and mental space to something that is, that is not useful or productive for me, quite frankly. Um, And I could be putting that to all these other things that I care about that are having impact in the world or positive benefit to my relationships. And so um, this idea that I don't want to be leaking, like, I want to do intentional things every day. And you know me now, like, I'm super intentional about so many habits and um, how I spend my time. And so the fact that I was just letting all of this energy leak out became really disturbing to me when I realized it with you. Um, And so I think my journey with you has been, how do I minimize that leakage as much as possible? And then there's some really positive benefits that come from doing that. Yes, absolutely. So, okay, tell us, how do you minimize the leakage? What do you do? I mean, like, what do you do personally? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, um, lots of things that, that, you know, you taught me and we worked on together. Um, I would say, for example, just the the idea of um, making a a sustainable plan for how I'm going to engage with food and anything I consume for that matter. Um, you know, that changes it from leaking to intentionality and planning. And so now I, you know, make my plan the day before. Um, I'm a sort of a big meal planner and whatnot. So I kind of make the master plan the week before, if you will. And then the daily plan is quite easy from there. Um, and when I do that, then I just know what I'm going to do. It's like set in motion. And so I'm not just like thinking about it and reprocessing it and perseverating on it all day, every day. It's just there and I'm checking it off as I'm going along. And the the only time I'm really spending on it is in those moments when I catch myself, quite frankly, it, it's like a driven to emotionally eat. And that's when I use my journaling tools and, you know, some of the other strategies I have so that I'm processing those feelings. Um, versus just like having them on loop in my head. Um, I mean, I I shared with you at one point, you know, there were times when I was so I had thought so many times about whether I was going to eat something or not. This would, of course, be something that I didn't really want to eat or or felt like I shouldn't be eating. That honestly, I couldn't remember if I had eaten it or not, because I had thought about it so much. Right. It's ridiculous, right? The amount that that's crazy. (laughs) So that just has gone away now. Yes. Yes. I love hearing that. And and I should say, you know, you know, you said that, you know, you this practice of creating a plan for yourself and um, you know, kind of sets it in motion. You're one of my clients who we're all different, and you're one of my clients who actually loves to cook, right? Like you, and so you were saying you kind of make your master plan for the week and um, and you love to cook. And I think it's also fair to let my listeners know that you came in as a really healthy eater to begin with. It wasn't like you were like, oh, I'm eating, you know, I'm going through the drive through at McDonald's every day. Like that was not what was happening. Um, but you you love to cook and you have found a way that of eating that works for you. But it, it, you didn't have to necessarily stop eating certain foods or feel restricted or deprived, you're still cooking, you're still enjoying food, you're still t- talk to a little bit about how that's worked for you. Yeah, th- this was such an important part of the work that we did together and how it's so different from anything I've ever done in my life. So always before I mean, I've been on plenty, like all of us, I've been on all sorts of diets and restrictions. And, you know, and always before it was, certainly I tracked my food, but it was like, how many teaspoons of this did I have and how many cups of that and points and restrictions and whatever. So I think one important thing to say is that's not what this is about anymore. This is making an intentional plan for what my you know mind wants to do for the next 24 hours, which is connected to my goals and who I want to be and how I want to feel. 
So it's not about eating a cup of something. It's literally about like eating the healthy vegetables I want to eat or eating the way that I know will make my body feel good. Um, so that's a fundamental difference, <laughs> number one. And two, like you said, I am in a family where we we love to cook. My husband's a really amazing cook. Like I'm pretty good. He's a really amazing cook. Food is a big part of our family. It's a big part of our life. We enjoy like really great dinners together. And I always before everything I've done, that would have been restricted or taken away. And what I was able to do with you was figure out how those that that could all stay a part of my life. It doesn't. And this is the sustainability part of this work. That that part hasn't changed at all. Um, and what I've learned is there's a couple of, of tweaks or, or changes that I choose to make um, that fundamentally change the outcomes around, number one, how I feel, how my body feels, and two, ultimately, um, how much I weigh then as a result. But but that's kind of a, that's not the primary goal. That becomes the, the product of this. Yes, exactly. Work. Yeah, yeah, this really um, great benefit that's all connected, but it's not like the driving goal. And and the difference there is the sustainability of this. Like I can live like this forever because it fits in my family. It fits in my life. Yeah. And I feel happy and joyful. Um, yeah. Yes, I have chills. I'm like, yes. So how has this, it was funny before I asked you this question, uh, it, you reminded me about, I remember starting Weight Watchers again. And I remember my then boyfriend, now husband, but we lived together. He was so, like, he would get so disappointed because he'd be like, oh, great. Because it meant that our meals together were now going to fundamentally shift because he was right. going to have to, like, memorize the things that he could make or couldn't make. Or he's going to have to measure everything that he puts in so that I could count my points. It was such a buzzkill in a relationship when yeah. you really enjoy food, right? And that hasn't been the case this time around. Not at all. And it's one of the reasons why I was like, yes, I want to work with Leah because I know that you like good food. Yeah. I know that you like, I know it's a part of your family and you're, yeah. you know, who you are and you like wine. And so we like a lot of the same things. And I was like, well, if we just figured it out, then I can figure it out. And That's right. you know, I don't think she's like long-term depriving herself. So definitely not, definitely not. So I love that you brought up the wine because I remember when you came to my master class, I had done a free master class and you joined it. And I remember you asked me then, you were like, you know, you you, you kind of um you said something along the lines of like, look, like how does this really work? Because we like good food and wine in my house, you know? And now your relationship had without like much effort, your relationship has really changed with wine. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, it has. Um and and um the I'll I'll start with how it's changed, which is um I'm just really um selective about when I'm gonna drink wine, number one. Um and I will say, you know, not proud of this, but like I'm gonna use the pandemic ex excuse that everyone does, but like during the pandemic, those were some dark days and dark nights. And, um, you know, we were at home all the time and we just sort of got into a habit. It was pretty easy to have a glass of wine every night or, you know, when a glass turns into, oh, we'll share a bottle sort of thing. And my husband invented a wine preserver, so it gets even easier, you know, so there's all these things. And, um, you know, like everything, we just develop habits that are not habits that I necessarily want or want to keep. And so one of the things I did was kind of review those habits. And the reality is like, you know, can I drink a glass of wine every day and be fine at work and whatever? Yeah, I can. But when I don't, and when I really pay close attention to how I feel in the morning and how my body feels, and if I feel like, you know, kind of like, swollen or you know all of those sorts of things I feel significantly better when I only drink wine on the weekends yeah. and when I only drink wine while we're eating the meal because for me the real joy is we like to pair our wine with the food and it's like this whole and I don't what I discovered with you after trial you know testing things week after week and recording it and talking about it was like I don't need to drink wine while we're making dinner I have like these emotional triggers that it, it makes me think that's going to be great. But 
I don't need to. I started just drinking sparkling water during that time frame, which reduced the amount of wine I was drinking. And I didn't feel deprived at all. I actually felt better that, you know, night and the next day. And so, you know, we, you and I just kind of experimented week after week of like, well, let's try this for a week and let's see what happens. And let's try that for a week and see what happens. And where I ended up settling in is like, you know, a couple of glasses on the weekend, not like feeling like I'm fully partaking and enjoying and having and then feeling physically so much better. And oh, by the way, what became very clear is the weight started like falling off when I was reducing the, 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 the wine. Yeah. So. I hate that that's the truth, but it is for a lot of us. And for some people, for some women, it is for some women, it's not particularly, particularly in, you know, from 45 and up because of the menopausal years. Um, do you, I've, I've told you this before, Diane, but you are one of my clients who my other clients, they don't know your name, but I've, I've referred to you and they hate you because I'm like, you know, I'm like, I have one client right now who's lost 25 pounds in the 90 day program. And they're like, who, where is she? <laughs> So, because you, you, the weight really did just kind of consistently drop off for you. Um, would you say it was all the wine that, you know, the, the shift in your wine, what would you say was really the, do you think really made the difference that you were able to lose 25 pounds in 90 days? Yeah. Um, the wine was, was certainly a part of it, but it wasn't everything. So one of the things that I discovered was, you know, I, I like you said, we cook we cook almost every single night of the week. We eat really healthy. We're in a place where we have access to great produce and everything. We like, you know, sort of Mediterranean, California type cooking. So like all of that, and I had I, for many years have been like kind of working on honing into a healthy diet. But I, like a lot of people, I think had gotten into some habits that were sort of um, masked by, oh, I eat really healthy, you know, but when we started, when I started journaling, when I started tracking, when I started paying attention, um, I realized like, oh, I had some habits that were adding a lot of food to my diet each week that I wasn't really counting or I wasn't paying attention to, or I wasn't. And so I had to really interrogate those habits and they, again, they weren't hard to get rid of. And I'll, I'll just, you know, share one with you that you know, well, was, you know, I do the grocery shopping every week. It's like a joy for me. I love going to the grocery store. I like it's super fun. And somewhere I had developed this habit, like I'll just get a treat when I go to the grocery store, you know, it's like my weekly treat. And in my mind, it's like, that's a week. It's not a big deal, whatever. But like, sometimes I have to stop by the grocery store a couple times a week or, you know, or it became more than one treat or it was a treat that would last for many days or whatever. And like, before you know it, it's just, you're adding a whole bunch of stuff. And so cutting that out was like a huge shift. Um, the other big thing, and I think this was a very big deal for me was it started with just literally paying attention to my hunger. And as you know, this is the first time in my life that I literally ever paid attention to my hunger, actually measured it, put a, me you know, you yeah. offered a measuring system. I have not been eating driven by hunger. I don't think ever in my life until now. I was eating out of habit, out of like duty, like you eat three meals a day or whatever it is. I was eating emotionally, you know, all of those things. And so what I finally realized through the weeks of working together was I'm not hungry in the morning. I only need two meals a day. Yeah. I don't need my first meal until about one o'clock in the afternoon. And then shockingly to me, I need my second meal like around six o'clock in yeah. this pretty short window of time, but then, then I'm good. And so before I knew it, I was doing this intermittent fasting that I was yeah. like, Wait, how did that happen? I wasn't even trying. Yes. Literally following my hunger. And that's probably the biggest shift. Yeah. I think when, when I just naturally eliminate a whole meal a day, there's a huge shift then in weight. But as you know, more importantly to me, oh my God, efficiency in time. I'm yeah. so happy I don't have to make or think about breakfast. Yes. So great. 
It is great. It saves you, especially getting out the door in the morning. If you're getting out the door in the morning, I mean, it is like, it's such a time saver. And as I've mentioned to you before, I also learned, especially when I was still working in schools and working on campus, that I could actually skip for pick because I used to come to work with this huge bag of food because I would have my breakfast in there because we get to work early. So I'd have my breakfast and I'd have my lunch and it would be huge, you know, because it was all this healthy food, but it was a huge bag yeah. that I had to prepare and, you know, do all of that, you know, the morning of or the night before just totally eliminated because I could actually get through my work day when I was leaving work at three 30, when I was in a t- different position um, without bringing any food to work at all. Right. Like, and if I got a little hungry, like, I, you know, there was something I could, uh, there was like a plan B, but often oh. I just didn't get hungry until it was time to go home. And then I'm like, I'd rather go home and eat than eat, sit at work and eat. Right. And so it's this time, you know, uh, prosperity really. It's like, wow. I've got all this time back in my life and it actually saves you money. If that's a concern, right. Because you're actually eating less food. Yeah. And you're spending less on food. Yeah, that, that was, that was transformational for me. And I, there were a couple of moments that were so um, pivotal because uh, you might remember there were a couple, part of the transition was getting over this weird fear I had that somehow I was going to get stuck without like being hungry, Yes, which is so crazy because it's like, oh, well, you're hungry for a few hours. It's really not a big deal, but it, it was a big deal in my head. And so um, I remember the first time I, when I was, do, had started doing this, I was traveling. And so I was like, oh, I'm going into a different time zone. Like, how am I going to know when I'm going to eat? And it, it was a route that I had traveled several times before. And so I literally just got up in the morning and set my timer for when it would be one o'clock in the afternoon, my, you know, my time. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to travel and I'm not going to eat until the timer goes off. Yeah. And I was stunned how late in the journey that was compared to when I had traveled that route before. I would have been eating hours and hours and hours and hours before that alarm went off before. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was doing that because it was routine. It was habit. It was out of fear. It was like, well, I got to eat now because what if I don't make the connection or the connection's late and I don't have time to get, you know, it was like all of this crazy leakage in my mind and eating when I didn't need to eat on top of it. And that travel just became so much easier. Yes. Over- yes. So- I love it. I love everything about this. I'm like, and this is why I was excited to have you on the show because I'm like, yes, like when, when we can nail this down, right? Like when we can really solve for this piece of our lives. And I remember when you came to me, you said, this feels like the final puzzle piece of my life. Like all of these other pieces are really in place and they feel so good, but this is the last piece and dang it. Like I want to nail this one. I'm, sick of this being an issue. And then when, when we really nail it, we're like, Oh, wow, this actually makes my, this impacts so many other aspects of my life in a really positive way, even just from the, the, the ease of travel, the, 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 of course, we've talked about the leakage, but the, the time that we gain back, the clarity that we gain back. I mean, it's just, it's incredible how it impacts all of these other areas of our lives. It it really is. It is. It is. And so one of the things that, you know, we should mention here is that you not only did you lose 25 pounds in 90 days, but this it wasn't like you stopped your entire life for 90 days to do this program. And in fact, you were going through a major life transition during this time. Um, and I've definitely had people who have been like, oh, I don't want to do your 90 day program because I'm there's this thing going on in my life at that time that, you know, I'm going to wait until it's a quote unquote good time to do this program. And I'm always like, no, 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 it's the opposite because this is your life. Right. And so we've got to, we've got to learn how to be different with food while life is lifing. We don't want to wait for this, like, you know, idyllic moment that's ever going to come. Do you want to talk a little bit about how that worked for you? Yeah, I do. Because it truly is the opposite, as you said. And, you know, the transition that I was going through, I had been in the same role, well, leading an organization for 20 years, as Leah said at the top, and was transitioning out of that role. And um, I did the same thing everyone does. Oh, I should just wait until after I've transitioned before I do this so I can handle it. But somewhere in my mind, for some reason, I made the right choice it's so exciting. And I was like, you know what, I actually think I should do this while I'm transitioning. Because if and what what went through my mind was that if I don't, 
somewhere deep inside, I knew I was going to like emotionally eat my way through that transition. And, you know, I look back now, I'm like, if I hadn't worked with you during that time, I probably would have gained 25 pounds. But instead, I come out of this transition, which is this massive shift and change. And I'm like, with such momentum, like I've lost 25 pounds, I have these amazing routines, like, and I'm like, how amazing that I set myself up for that success yeah, by is. choosing to embrace that moment of change to just go for it. And, you know, before I would have convinced myself, well, I don't have time to like plan and count and all of that. But again, like that's not what it's about. And so I, I didn't need any extra time. If anything, it ended up giving me more time back because I found all these efficiencies right. Um, and felt so good through it. And so, yeah, for me, that that worked beautifully. And it's interesting, everyone I talked to, because I did not um, take any time off in between my last 20 year role and what I've thrown myself into. And so people think I'm kind of crazy for that. And so they're like, wait, you didn't take six months off? Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, no, but I did do this for myself. And I tell them, about working with you and the 90 day plan and what I did. And then they're like, Oh, wow. You know, I'm like, that's what, that's what I needed. That was the thing that actually Ah. me up, not, not working for six months and probably sitting around and thinking about food the whole time. Exactly. That's what I was just going to (laughs) say. Not working. So you're like baking and eating popcorn and watching food. like, but (laughs) yeah, definitely. Well, the, 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 the last, piece that I really want to make sure that we touch on is in your last session, in our last session together, um, one of the things that you mentioned that is that you feel more confident, um, which is hard to believe because you are a very confident woman. I think it's fair to say, right? There's not a lot of, I don't think many people would say, oh, Diane Tavener, she's not very confident, right? Like very confident. And I don't think you just come off that way. I think you have some real genuine confidence. Um, but can you talk a little bit about how you're more confident now that you've done this work for yourself? Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's such an important point. I'm so glad we're talking about it because I think no matter who we are, everyone, everyone does this, right? Like I hear you when you say, you know, oh my gosh, how could you not be confident? And other people say that to me when they look at the things I do and what, where, you know, the the rooms I'm in and and the stuff I've done. And so I can like um, cognitively understand why they're saying that. But then of course I know myself and I'm like, oh, if you only knew the inner monologue or the inner critic that that you know tape that is running 24 7 in our heads no matter who we are that is just sort of constantly eating away at our own confidence or our own um you know security and who we are ourselves and I think I think most of us have that inner critic and it can be louder or quieter at different times. But, you know, I certainly like everyone else have, have that inner critic. And, um, you know, so even though I do things that look like confidence to the outside, it's like a big battle on the inside to overcome that that voice to be able to do those things. And that's where the leakage comes in because like, okay, maybe I could do it, but how many hours did I spend getting myself into that place? And how many little choices did I make in those moments that were compromises that I I shouldn't have had to make? And and I'll just give you an example. Um, You know, a lot of the work that I've done over the last many years involves me being a speaker, you know, on stages or, you know, in, in big forums, like thousands and thousands of people or, you know, stages with crazy famous people, you know, and in every one of those cases, I can't tell you how much time or energy I spent worrying about and thinking about and second guessing what I was going to wear, how, if it was going to make me look fat or not, or, you know, like how I would feel. And, and I told you this, even like, whether or not I would stand a certain way or because I didn't want people like seeing 
my butt, you know, I'm like, I don't want to be facing backward or I don't want the camera to c- catch this. I remember one time I was being filmed and they wanted to film me like walking away. And I'm like, no, <laughs> you know? Um, and uh-huh. so that's, that's the stuff that's going on. And I, I don't even know how to think about the impacts of both the time and the leakage and the energy but also those little micro decisions that I made over and over and over again, who knows what they added up to versus not having to be thinking about them at all. Yes, exactly. That's exactly it. How much it adds up. There is um, an amazing book that I'll just mention here. I probably mentioned it on the show before, um, but it's called the confidence code by uh, two women. Um, uh, I think it's Patty K and Claire, I'm forgetting her last name, you know? but anyway, uh, I'll put it in the show notes, but absolutely. It, it, it's really about the study of confidence and where it comes from, how we build it. And, um, and to, to your point, they, they interview some of the, you know, highest ranking, you know, top performing, highest achieving women in the world. Um, and a lot of it is exactly what you just said, which is, you know, well, yeah, like I show up and I do it. I get on the stage, I do the talk, but what you don't see is all of like the crazy time that I put into making sure every single thing was just perfect. Right. And how I'm, you know, that I, I'm not going to fail here. And that I'm, you know, spent all this time thinking about exactly what I'm going to wear so that I look a certain way. And I don't think men do it. I, I think they do that to some extent, possibly, but I don't think that they're doing it to this at the same you know, rate that we are because we spend, the book actually also talks about uh, female propensity to overthink um, yeah. and, and to, um, you know, a, a lean toward perfectionism. And so those things together, right, it just ends up being, you know, minute upon minute upon minute over decades. Like, what does it add up to? So well, where would you say you're at with it now? Well, um significantly improved. And so like just a few weeks ago, I went to this, you know, week long conference that I go to every summer. And, you know, every summer, I'm doing the same thing, like, Oh, my God, what am I gonna wear? What's it gonna look like and worrying about all of those things. And this summer, um, it was totally different. Like I didn't even think about packing until like the day before I wasn't obsessing about um, I just felt comfortable in my own skin. And I actually noticed multiple times during the week where I was like, Oh, I just feel good right now. I'm not normally I would be like, having this tape running in my head of like, Oh, gosh, what are people thinking? Or, you know, can they see that? Or, you know, what does that look like? Or how these pants look or whatever it is. And I instead, I was just there being with people enjoying it, feeling good. I even said to this one woman pretty vulnerably, that's the other thing that I've been on a vulnerability journey for a number of years and you've been a big part of that. But I said pretty vulnerably to her, you know, well, um, I said something like, she's like, you look amazing this summer, like you're glowing or whatever. And I said, you know, I, um, I, um, I just feel like this is what I did. I worked with, you know, this woman and whatnot. I said, I've struggled with my weight my whole life. And she literally looked at me and was like, seriously, like super surprised, you know? And I was like, Oh, wow. Yeah. Like people on the outside can't, they just see us differently than we see ourselves. They can't imagine what's going on, but there's all this stuff happening inside. And so the big, big shift is I, I'm much healthier on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that, Diane. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show today. And I, I definitely, you know, I, I firmly believe that if we could, that if I can help, if more women could plug up the leakage, right. And then, you know, redirect that energy toward, you know, relationships, their larger contribution. Like I I truly believe that we women would have taken over the world by now. So that's my mission is world domination. (laughs) I, you are such um, you are such a wonderful role model in that way of really investing in yourself and taking the the time and energy to 
um, to prioritize solving this last piece of the puzzle. And you, you're just, you're, you're a role model, not just to the listeners of this show, but honestly, to the next generation of girls. So I just really want to say thank you for, for doing that modeling for us. Well, um, thank you for doing it in partnership with me. Um, I really couldn't have um, done this without you. And it was, um, yeah, I, I am grateful to you, Leah. And so I um, truly hope that more women get the opportunity like I had to work with you and to have your um, your wisdom and your complete lack of judgment and um, the support that I got from you to be where I am. So thank you. You've been listening to The Life You Crave. I lost 30 pounds years ago without dieting, willpower, or deprivation. I'm on a mission to help other women, including you, do the same. You can book a free weight loss strategy session with me over at leahpinelli.com. That's L I A. P-I-N-E-L-L-I dot com. See you on our next call or on the next episode. And remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment on iTunes. Mm-hmm.